everything changes with time. Like you can't, you can't predict where you're gonna be next year. You have no idea, you know what I mean? Like there have been points, like I've been in very, 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 very low points. My mom always tells me, like, time will heal everything, you know what I mean? Even if it takes, even if it's like five years later and you're still feeling like, where the fuck, like when I'm waiting for this shit to heal, like it's nothing's happening. It's gonna take another, you know, few years, you know what I mean? That shit does take time. Everything here is dead. It's easier to see when it's not. I just heard a voice in my head. Yeah. This rapper was up and coming, he's only 21 years old unresponsive inside of his tour bus from an apparent drug overdose. And emerging rapper Lil Peep died last night right before he was set to perform in Tucson. I think you should straighten up a little bit. I think you should, I think, you know, you should, you should look at yourself in the mirror sometime and say, look, what am I doing? Why, why am I this way? Gustav was born November 1st, 1996 in Allentown, Pennsylvania to parents Liza and Carl. His mom was a first grade teacher and his dad was a college professor. Liza says Allentown was a small and dead town and they didn't know many people. Liza, Gus and his brother Oscar spent most days at home playing and watching cartoons before their dad would come home at night. Although born in Pennsylvania, he would only spend the first five years of his life there. In 2001, his dad would get a new job offer at Hofstra University, and their family moved two hours away to Long Island, New York. Long Island was a very different environment than Allentown. Most kids there were very athletic and into lacrosse or hockey. But Gus took dance classes. His mom says he loved to dance, and he took ballet and dance until he was seven, and then he started taking hip hop classes. He eventually told his parents he no longer wanted to continue the classes due to the girls teasing him for being the only boy. Gus always had a creative spark, whether it was dancing, drawing, writing short stories, or messing around with the guitar. By the time he was attending middle school, he was beginning to feel like he didn't fit in with a lot of people, and in his words stated, it's hard to find people you fuck with. His grades that were once near perfect began to slip, and he started to care less about school. Even though he had a few close friends, he mostly stuck to himself, in his room. This behavior would gradually become the normal for him over the coming years. It would only get worse around 10th grade when his parents would separate and his father left the home. People close to him stated he was a different person after this. He became even more of an outcast when he started getting tattoos and smoking weed. His mom who noticed the changes encouraged him to try taking therapy or talking to someone, but Gus only found therapy in the drugs he took in his room. With problems at home and the feeling that nobody around him could relate to what he was going through would create the foundation of his sadness. With his father slowly leaving the picture, he would look to his grandfather as the man in his life, and they always had a special bond. His room became his safe haven, listening to music, playing RPGs like RuneScape or World of Warcraft, and meeting people online who couldn't judge him. When Gus started to take notice of how other artists were making careers for themselves off the internet, he started to direct his creative energy toward music. While in high school, he wrote his earliest raps, and if you were close enough friends with him, he would freestyle sometimes. He always wanted to be a rapper. He always fucked around. Like, he yeah. was always good at, like, a freestyle or anything like uh -huh. that. Like, he was always good at yeah. it. Always the best one in the room. Initially going by the name Trap Goose, he recorded his first official songs, like Down, Down, Down and Latitude. Unknowingly, Gus was already building relationships that would grow to something much bigger. The beat he produced for Down, Down, Down was from Virginia producer Smoke a Sack, who he met online. Eventually, he couldn't stand being in school for more than 45 minutes anymore. Sometimes he'd throw up before school, and if he did go, he'd end up hopping a 20-foot fence nearly every day to escape, before finally dropping out. He tried getting a job at a seafood restaurant, but quit shortly after. He knew he couldn't just be something regular. At 17, he got his first face tattoo, which was a broken heart near his left eye. He stated this motivated him to go harder for his music, because he knew it would make it harder to get a regular job. He finished high school on a low-pressure online program that only required one essay a week, which he admits his mom usually finished for him. While she slept every night, he would be awake recording new music on GarageBand. While this is happening, Gus's childhood friend Brennan Savage was living in San Francisco, and he invited him to come stay the summer of 2014 at his house while his parents were gone. Wasting no time to get away from the place that was causing him so much pain, he left for California. He stayed the whole summer with Brennan, but as summer ended, Brennan began looking into colleges for the fall semester. Gus wanted to stay in California though, and he began telling Brennan how they should get to LA so he can really try to make a name for himself with his music. 
my mom like left her car behind and I would like mm -hmm. take my mom's car up to LA for the day and go house hunting. We were 18 doing that, Gus was 17. They were looking in the Glendale and Pasadena area, which was close to Glendale Community College, which Gus and Brennan both enrolled in. Gus knew the only way his mom would approve of him staying was if he told her he was going to school. They eventually moved into 1700 University Drive in Pasadena for $1,600 a month. It was a small house, but it worked for the time being. Gus managed to stay in school for a few weeks, but inevitably dropped out. He knew the real reason he was there was to focus solely on music, and school was never going to be his thing. He couldn't focus, and music was all he was thinking about. As a few months passed, it became increasingly harder for him to come up with the $800 portion of his rent. They were living off a of little food and resources. He was recording music, but was getting frustrated with that as well. He felt like it wasn't coming out the way he envisioned it, and was having trouble learning how to mix and master his sound. Things just weren't working out in California, and he decided to move back to his mom's on Long Island. Being back home wasn't any better for Gus, but it did something to him that made him more focused and motivated than ever. He started to put all of his emotions and pain into his music without any filter and decided to change his name. Peep was a nickname his mom gave him as a child and used to always call him. He put Lil in front of it and birthed the name we know today, Lil Peep. Over the next six months at home, he started to find his sound and was learning how to mix it into something he was comfortable enough to share online. In 2015, he dropped his single Star Shopping and things slowly started to change. He started to build a small following of listeners and was getting a few thousand plays online. After Star Shopping received so much positive feedback from friends and fans, his confidence that had been tucked away for a long time was beginning to surface again. He was excited and started collabing and making friends with other artists and producers online, dropping five EPs within 2015, one of them with the UK artist Bexy and another with Omen. Peep loved the fact that he was meeting more people that were like him. Another collaborator he met was Craig Zen. Craig Zen showed Peep's music to an underground rap collective, Schema Posse, which was run by Jay Green and had other members like Ghostman. Jay Green heard about 30 seconds of Peep's music and already knew he was something special. He DM'd Peep and they ended up talking on the phone, inevitably inviting him to join Schema Posse. On September 18, 2015, he released his first official mixtape, Lil Peep Part 1. On the tape, he expresses vulnerable themes like relationship problems, depression, and drug addiction. Problems he's dealt with for years and felt like wasn't being talked about enough in music at the time. Understanding that people were starting to take notice of his hard work, he followed this tape up with two more, Mall Music and Live Forever. In early 2016, he was motivated and wanted to get back to LA for a second shot and making a name for himself. He ended up moving back with Brennan in Pasadena, but this time inviting more artists and producers to join them, helping cover the cost of living as well. The two-bedroom house started to fill and become a hub of like-minded creatives until almost 12 people were living there at one time. Peep, Brennan, Ghostmane, Nedarb, and Killstation were some of the artists living there at the time. They would party and collab on music all day. Although Peep's name was starting to create a small buzz in the underground, he was still struggling and would often live off of canned food and clothes his mother would send him from Long Island. They were far apart, but his mom would text him often to make sure he was doing okay and he had what he needed. He always stated his mom was one of his best friends. Schema Posse had a few shows in Oakland, Tucson, and Denver lined up, and they included Peep in them. These were his first live performances ever, and admits to taking Xanax before each show to calm his nerves, but despite taking medications, still threw up after every song. By now, he's recently released his single off of his California Girls EP, Beamer Boy, which was quickly becoming an underground favorite. Jay Green would later say the crowds would go off for everybody, but when Peep came on and played Beamer Boy, they went crazy. After their small tour of shows, they ended back up in LA, where they were invited to do an interview with No Jumper. During the interview, you can really see Peep's social anxiety through his body language. He only speaks when spoken to, and even then seems to be out of his comfort zone. This was all still very new to him. Unfortunately, two days after the interview, Schema Posse broke up. Peep, Jay Green, and Ghostmane pursued solo careers. Now a free agent, Peep headed back to the Pasadena house and continued to work on more music. One of Peep's producers, Ned Arb, was living at the house and started introducing members of the rap group he was a part of, Goth Boy Click. GBC was another underground group of artists who Peep had already been a fan of long before. Now he was being introduced to them. I'm been Tracy since 2012, shout out you. I've been Tracy since 2012. Peep began collabing with GBC members Wickaface, Cold Heart, and Horsehead online while working on his next mixtape, Crybaby. One day Nedar brought Lil Tracy over, who was going by the name Youngbruh at the time. 
Tracy and Peep hit it off immediately, even recording their underground hit White Tee the same day. The video was filmed by Kill Station on an old $30 camcorder, but it was perfect for the aesthetic they were going for. On June 10, 2016, Peep dropped his fourth official mixtape, Crybaby, named after the Crybaby tattoo he recently got on his forehead. The mixtape featured samples from the early 2000s and gave off a nostalgic pop-punk vibe that made it stand out in the oversaturated market of SoundCloud rap. Over the coming months, Peep grew closer to GBC. It was hard to see Peep and Tracy not together. They were inseparable. They even dropped a three-song EP together titled Castles. Hey guys, I got a house. It's a lot. You wanna see it? I've been homeless for six months, and now I have a loft in LA. This is Ned Arb's room, and this is my room, because I'm swag, you feel me? Look, look, come on, come on. In the summer of 2016, most of Gothboy Click and Lil Peep decided to move out of the now iconic Pasadena house into a loft in the heart of downtown LA. As Ned Arb would say, it was located right on the border of Skid Row. It was a large open space with no real bedrooms, and when you opened the window, you could smell the filth of downtown. It was far from perfect, but it's what they could afford at the time, and they stated it wasn't bad for what it was. There were no noise complaints, and they could be as loud as they wanted. Peep sold one of his songs online for $500 to help come up with the upfront cost to move in. Much like the Pasadena house, the loft became a place of creativity, housing over 10 artists all pursuing their dreams. They would often throw shows and charge people to perform in the loft, using the money to pay rent. Peep's mattress was on the floor, and next to him an $800 microphone and MacBook that he was using to record new music. On September 16th, Gothboy Click announced Lil Peep was officially a member through a promotional tweet for his mixtape Hellboy. Hellboy was released on the 25th of September, and was the first released after joining GBC. The tape is credited to officially bringing Peep's name into the conversation of up-and-coming rappers. Although many of the songs and features on the tape stood out, there was always one artist with more features, and that was Tracy. The two's collaborations started to become fan favorites and people wanted more from the two. They started making a little money from shows around LA and word started to spread. Lil Peep's social media and streams started to rise and more blogs were now covering his music. He finished 2016 strong having dropped a total of 4 EPs and 2 mixtapes, having made a ton of new friends and fans in the process. Things were looking better than ever for everyone, but especially Peep. Even though he was not the first person, he was being credited with popularizing the emo rap sound. In early of 2017, Tracy and Peep dropped Castles too, and with the money he was now making from music, was able to afford to move out of the loft into his own pink apartment in Echo Park. This would be the location for their Witchblades music video, as well as many others. Peep and GBC would go on a 21 show tour across the country, and he was on the brink of breaking out into the mainstream. Although he could finally afford his own place, his music was doing numbers, and everyone seemed to be benefiting from his success in some way or another, things were also starting to change. At this point, Peep had been signed to a management agreement with First Axis Entertainment and was receiving even more exposure than his peers because of this. Blogs and interviews were covering more of Peep's music and would oftentimes leave out the fact that he was a part of Gothboy Click in the process. In May of 2017, Peep took to Twitter to randomly announce he was moving to London, where he lived with Bexy and producer Smokasack. Although there's a lot of speculation about why he decided to move, he never gave a reason, only that he was trying something new. During this time and through the summer, his friendship with Lil Tracy began to strain. Tracy stated he didn't want to be known as anyone's shadow, and that's how he felt things were headed with his relationship with Gus. Although a lot of extra exposure Peep was getting can be tied to his new management deal, Tracy still felt like he could have done more for GBC at the time. Peep was gaining a lot of new fans this year, and many of them knew little or nothing about Gothboy Click or its history. They only knew Lil Peep. In addition, blogs like Pitchfork, who wrote articles about their collaborations like White Wine, wrote paragraphs about Lil Peep's performance on the song, while only giving Tracy a name drop in the last sentence. Although the two had been in a disagreement, they always had love for each other deep down. This was never really more than brothers getting into it. It was inevitable they would make music together again. What we do? You get me. That's what London does to you, man. <laughs> you get me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> While in London, Peep continued to drop singles like Brightside and Ben's Truck while working on his highly anticipated debut album. He was getting more popular every day. On August 15, 2017, Come Over When You're Sober Part 1 dropped. And despite Tracy and Peep not being on the best of terms, he was the only one featured on the album. The album initially received mixed reviews and Lil Peep's name was reaching new audiences of people, some of which may never have actually listened due to thinking his music was glorifying depression or self-harm. While the other half were fans who didn't overlook his songwriting abilities and found comfort in his music and the dark themes he was shedding light on. 
On October 2nd, he headed out on the Come Over When You're Sober tour, which included 31 shows. At the start of the tour, Peep seemed to be in great spirits and excited to be on the road again. But over the coming weeks, it was apparent his head was no longer in a good place. It's unclear what exactly was going on during the tour, but what we do know is Lil Peep was not used to being on the road for this amount of time. He only had a few days off scattered throughout the tour, which were used for traveling between shows that were farther apart. On November 1st, he celebrated his 21st birthday on tour. Despite being physically and mentally exhausted, Peep pushed on and was nearing the end of the tour. On November 14th, he performed live in El Paso, Texas for the last time. November 15th was Lil Peep's last day with us. He only had two shows left on tour. Peep's at the back of the bus doing press-ups, sit-ups, working on his six-pack, his muscles. I'm gonna see for myself. My brother just died in my arms, man. I'm done with this shit, man. Forever. Fuck this shit. Although he's no longer with us, he's left us with a lifetime of art. In an interview a year prior to his passing, he was asked what his goal in music was. This was his response. Lil Peep went from sitting in his room looking for an outlet to express himself to having millions of fans memorize his lyrics and interpret his messages. For that, his legacy will live forever.